Hi, and welcome back to my channel, or welcome for the first time if this is your first time visiting. Today we are kicking off the Oh Happy Day Sampler Sew Along. I know many of you have been waiting eagerly for this Sew Along to start, as have I, and so today is the day. I'm going to be sharing which block we're going to be making first, although you're probably getting a pretty good idea by the quilt you're looking at in the background. We are going to be starting off with the Generations of Love block for this quilt along. So let's talk a little bit about the quilt. I'll show you the pillow and then I will walk you through piecing the block, the first block that you're gonna need for this sampler sew along. I should mention, if you aren't familiar at all with the sew along that's happening right now, I will link to all of the information that I have shared so far down in the description box below this video so you can catch right back up. Now, this quilt behind me is the Generations of Love quilt that is featured in the Oh Happy Day book. This quilt is a 60 by 68 inch throw sized quilt and the fabrics I used are at home by Bonnie and Camille. Now, if you watched my trunk show of the Oh Happy Day book, you know that each quilt also features a pillow. The pillow that I made for this project is made using Bella solids as well as a sunny side up fabric for that border. When I was writing this book, I knew that I wanted to have a sampler sew along after the book came out. And so for every quilt, there is the pillow and this center part of the pillow without the borders on is a 12 inch block. That means that when you look at the pillow instructions for each project, each pillow project in the book, that you can find the cutting instructions for each individual 12 inch finished block, which makes hosting this so along so easy because you can reference those instructions and you have all of the cutting instructions that you need to make one block. For the Generations of Love pillow project, you will turn to page 32 and right underneath the material section, the very first portion of fabrics it tells you to cut is for 18 rectangles. Cut those 18 rectangles and that is all you are going to need for this first block. Now, if you look down below on my table, I have cut out all of the 18 rectangles that I need and I have laid them out according to how I am going to be sewing them together. This block is very easy to sew together, but you do have to pay attention to how you are laying out the blocks so that you get this sort of pinwheel design once all of those rectangles are sewn together. I am using buttercup and slate fabrics which have, which have just hit quilt shops and you can see the exact prints that I have chosen as well as my layout. Now I am going to have more information as well as more photos over on my blog of my completed blocks so that if you can't quite make out the prints here, you can just pop on over there and take another look. The first thing that you are going to want to do after you lay out all of your rectangles is to sew together those rectangles in pairs. Now, as you're sewing together these pairs, you will just press the seams to one side. Um, I would probably press towards the dark, but it doesn't really matter which way you choose to press those. You'll just press to one side. And then when you start and you sew together the rows, you are going to press towards the long sides of these rectangles. So this will get pressed in here this will get pressed away, and then this bottom row will get pressed in here. So I'm going to go ahead and sew together each of my pairs, and then sew those into the row so that you can see how the pressing is going to look on the back, and I will show you that in just a moment. I've sewn my pairs together, as you can see, and then I have joined them into the horizontal rows. When I flip these over, you can see how I have pressed on the back for the pairs, just like I said, I just press towards the darker fabrics, and then in each row, I press towards the pair that had the longer edges. So you can see that meant I was pressing the top and the bottom towards the center, and then the center row gets pressed away from the center. The next thing that I will do will be to sew all of these rows together, and that is actually going to complete the block let me go do that. And this is what your completed block will look like. 
I'm going to show you the back. I pressed the seams away from the center. Those seams are going to want to go that direction and it's going to lay nice and flat pressing it that way. And then there is the front. As you can see, this is a very simple block. We are kicking off our sampler sew along with. I think you guys will enjoy sewing this block up. The nice thing about doing a sew along like this where we are making a variety of blocks from one book is that you really do get to try out the blocks, see which ones you enjoy, see which quilts you might like to make, see which pillows you might like to make. There are a lot of options that you can do with the book once you have finished your sew along and you get a feel for which blocks are your favorites. Over the course of the next 12 weeks, today being week one, we have 11 more weeks of the sew along, we are going to be making nine different blocks from the book and then we will finish off with three weeks of finishing instructions for a total of 12 weeks. We're going to be finished before Christmas, so hopefully we will have a finished quilt top before the holidays, or maybe you will be saving some of the blocks to work on over a holiday vacation, which would be a lot of fun. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them for me in the comments below and I will get those answered. And let me know what fabrics you are sewing with. I know I see a lot of you sewing with Buttercup and Slate, but I am sure there are many of you sewing with something different. So let me know what you're sewing with and I will catch you again next time.